Hey guys, I am recording from my laptop, so the lighting might not be perfect actually. No, it's worse. wanted to get on and read a devotional that made so much sense and I've talked about this before it's um I went to my bible app and the first of the day was Acts 319 which is when um is it Paul I think the apostles are telling people to repent turn away from their sin which I did that a couple of days ago I think but um this devotional just like I just love the way that they put it as far as repentance and so it reads I can't do this on my own no matter where we may be on our journey of finding our way back to God we all have stuff in our lives that we are holding that we are still holding on to for some, it's a secret, activity, or habit that nobody else knows about. For others, it's pretty obvious what we're still chasing. What is it for you? What do you need to let go of? God rarely puts something new in your life until you let go of something old and broken. That's why the next step beyond awakening to regret is awakening to help. This third awakening moves us a giant step closer to God because we realize we can't do it alone. What happens next? We make a call. We have that conversation. We walk into a support group. We find ourselves sliding back into the back row of church. We fall on our knees and cry out, God, if you're real. Turning away from destructive choices and seeking help is a part of repentance. To repent is to go home, returning to where you came from and where you belong. That's God. Going home is about being forgiven and receiving assurance of life after this life. But it also, but it's also about finding new meaning and direction for life that you can't find anywhere else. It's about having a relationship with God. It's about redirecting your life and returning to where you've come from and where you belong. When you repent, God changes you. You are different. The Bible says that God's spirit comes to live inside you and that results in a recognizable and ongoing transformation. Keep in mind that repentance doesn't mean feeling bad. As a matter of fact, the Bible says true repentance leads to times of refreshing from the Lord. Repentance is about starting over and admitting I need help. This call to repent, to turn away from our sin and return home to God is for everyone. This could be the day you go home get up from where you are and come home to where you belong. It does not matter what poor decisions you have made in the past. God is saying to you, whatever you have done, whatever you have become, it doesn't matter. Just come home. What do you need to repent of today? How might repenting lead you to times of refreshing with God? I love how they just put it together. And repenting, like I love how they said repenting is to go home, returning to where you belong, returning to where you come from and where you belong, which is with the Lord. That is your home. That is where you belong. That is where you belong. He is your creator. He brought you into this earth. He created you in your mother's womb. 
he knows the amount of hairs that are on your head, on your face, on your whole body. He knows everything about you. And I woke up this morning with so much anxiety. And that's not me, like I'm not a person that has anxiety like that. And I was just like asking the Lord to like reveal that to me, like why? Like I literally woke up like with my heart pacing. And I just laid in bed and then I just started, I opened up my Bible and I just started reading scripture and I was just kind of led to just Jeremiah, which I never really read Jeremiah, but in Jeremiah, it's talking, mm, it's talking about Jerusalem and how, where was I at? And how the Lord is asking them to repent of their sins. Hold on, guys. Yeah. I was in Jeremiah. Where was I, Lord? I think, like, Jeremiah 12. Maybe. Hold on. Yeah, I started in Jeremiah 12, and I just kind of ran read through um, Jeremiah I think yeah Jeremiah 16 and it's talking about you know the punishment and basically what I was reading was these people decided to walk away from the Lord they decided to they decided to um, worship false gods and God was over here like asking them to repent they didn't want to they continued to, to worship these idols and have these wicked thoughts and just would lie they would say something out of their mouth but in their heart they're thinking a whole other thing because God can see the heart and Jeremiah is trying to let me see what I could read from the... I'm just going to read Jeremiah 15. I think this is... No, it's actually Jeremiah 14, verses 11. I'll just read what's, what I have highlighted. But this is basically Jeremiah... Before this, Jeremiah was interceding for the people. But the Lord is forbidding, forbidding them. Jesus... The Lord is forbidding Jeremiah to intercede for them because they're so deep in sin and they're just, the Lord's giving them chance after chance after chance. So, actually, let me back up, guys. So y'all can get context and y'all can understand what I'm saying. Jeremiah's question. Jeremiah is a really good book. And it's like, where was I reading from? Judgment for disobedience. That's what I was reading. This book here, it was like, man. Okay. I'm going to read Judgment for Disobedience. Actually, let me start before that. I'm going to start at Jeremiah 8.18. And the subtitle says, Jeremiah weeps for sinful Judah. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods? Says the Lord. 
The harvest is finished and the summer is gone. The people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and, and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's, in a traveler's shack in the desert. For they all are adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. Adulterer, basically, they're cheating on the Lord because the Lord comes first in everything. He is the husband, he's the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. And so when we partner with the world and we're following the ways of the world and following Satan, we're cheating on God because he comes first. He's our first love. I'm going to go and read on to the judgment for disobedience. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother. For brothers... For brother takes advantage of brother, and friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues, they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie, and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven Army says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors with scheming in their hearts to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? I will weep for the mountains and well for the wilderness pastures. For they are desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. I will make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It will be a place haunted by jackals. The towns of Judah will be ghost towns with no one living in them. Who is wise enough to understand all this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They have refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed their own desires and worshipped the load I'm sorry, and worshipped the images of Baal as their ancestors taught them. So now, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Look, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I will scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of. And even there I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. The Lord forbids the Lord forbids Jeremiah to intercede. Then the Lord said to me, Do not pray for these people anymore. When they fast, I will no pay I will pay no attention. When they present their burnt offerings and grain offerings to me, I will not accept them. Instead I will devour them with war, famine, and disease. Then I said, This is Jeremiah. 
O sovereign Lord, their prophets are telling them all is well. No war or famine will come here. The Lord will surely send you peace. Then the Lord said, These prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them to tell them to speak. I did not give them any messages. They prophesy of visions and revelations they have never seen or heard. They speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will punish these lying prophets for they have spoken in my name, even though I never sent them. They say that there no war or famine will come, but they themselves will die by war and famine. As for the people to whom they prophesy, their bodies will be thrown out into the streets of Jerusalem, victims of famine and war. That's a whole lot. I was just reading through this and I'm like, Lord. And God is the most amazing person, spirit, dad, friend, yes. But guys, his judgment is here. You know, last night I was just kind of scrolling through TikTok and um, there was this one person that I saw and apparently the Lord had given him something and he's crying and everything and he's talking about like we're not even in the last days, we're not even in the end days, we're in the end moments. You know, if you just pay attention to what's going on in the world. And he mentioned California. And that's where I'm at right now. And California's had quite a few, um, not floods, but it's it's been, it's had a lot of rain recently. And it just, it just makes me think of when all that when the flood came you know in, in the beginning of of the Old Testament um, Noah had to build an ark because the Lord told him there was a flood coming but there's so much going on in this world right now so much wickedness Jesus is bound to come back very soon I don't know when he's coming back but he is. And the whole point of the Lord working through people, speaking through people, is to get the word out. To repent. To repent. Come to Him. Believe in Him. Have a relationship with Him. And you will be saved. So you can be in heaven. Have eternal life. But not even just that, just having a tranced, a transformed life. Not feeling empty anymore, not feeling depressed anymore, not feeling that anxiety anymore. Not feeling like you're just not worthy anymore. I've been there. I know I keep saying that, but I've been there. Even now, sometimes I don't feel worthy. You know, there's times where the Satan will just throw those stupid darts at me like, this person is smarter than me and I'm never going to be blessed and I'm never going to do this and I'm never going to do that. And, and I'm dumb enough to just kind of sit there and just be like, wow, like, hmm. But then I'm like, no, Satan. Satan is a ruler of this world. Yes, God created the heavens and the earth. 
God is above all. But God and Jesus are up in there, up in there, are up in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is down here with us. For those who are saved, He dwells within us. But then He's also convicting the world of their sins and tugging at their hearts and speaking to their hearts and asking them to turn away and come home. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He did it for me. He will do it for you. And Satan is out here just lying and destroying so many people at this moment. It kind of sad, it's sad. So, I'm going to read this love letter. And I, it's just, I felt last night like the Lord was telling me to just his people that he is coming back and to repent and I'm like Lord I already did that I already done that do it again and I was disobedient last night I didn't I didn't get on and then here I am I woke up with so much anxiety and I um, opened up to Jeremiah and it's talking it's just, I'm like, okay. And here I am. And it just so happened to be that my Bible app, the verse of the day was Acts 3.16. So I'm going to read Jeremiah 15.16. It's a love letter. And... The subtitle says, God's word transforms lives. When I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, O Lord, God of heaven's armies. That's Jeremiah speaking to God. Beloved daughter, I am the author of life. My word is my gift to you. I don't want you to miss out on the letters of life that I have written to you in my word. As you read it, I will deposit truth in your spirit. My word will be a lamp to guide your feet and a light for your path. It will give you direction when you've lost your way. When you live out my word, my power can be displayed in you. As your heavenly father, I'm asking you to make my word the very thing that feeds your spirits your mind and your soul there's nothing more important than spending time with me each day open my book of life and connect your heart to mine love your heavenly father reflection reads the word of god is a treasure that will make our spiritual lives rich there is nothing more valuable than the living and active word of god being displayed in our lives as you wean yourself off the things of this world, you will become hungrier for the things in the word. Amen. Nothing is in this world. Nothing in this world will give you a richer life than God's word. That is so true. This world is soon going to pass away. We can't take these things. We cannot take these things with us. The bed. The the fan, this, whatever, that picture, like, the cars, we can't take them with us. But all we need, and it's just like, the, the beauty of it, I can't even fathom what heaven looks like. Just seeing Jesus, I cannot fathom. 
from what he looks like, what he sounds like, what the God, the Father, looks like. What he just... Man, that is a day that is going to be a glorious day. There's this... <sighs> Never mind. I'm gonna wait <laughs> to talk about that. But, um... If you have walked away from the Lord, Undescribable. I will continue to say that, but man, people are blowing me up. <laughs> um, I just wanted to get on and share that devotional. I, I love how they broke it down about repentance, and I read just some scripture. I read a love letter. And I kind of shared what was on my heart. And I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm always, I just kind of say what the Lord tells me to say. I say what I feel in my spirit He's telling me to say. And um, it's just, it happens to be repentance. Because at the end of the day, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to be a vessel for him whether it's talking about repentance is talking about whatever it is and it just so happens to be today it's repentance so if you don't have a relationship with the Lord it's an, it's a really good time to get one a really good time because there's so much deception going on. And I, I saw a TikTok just the other day, yesterday, and it makes, makes total sense. And he was talking about he was talking about how there's times where the Lord will wake us up in the middle of the night and you know sometimes we're so busy during the day he knows we're so busy during the day that he will wake us up at night to give us a word to get us whatever it is read a word worship um, pray whatever it is and there's times where <clears throat> That actually this whole this whole time I've been here except for I think the first night I slept like the whole like I did not wake up at all like I just got up to use freshman but there was dreams that I was having there was times where I was waking up according to my dreams writing it down whatever and so he was talking about that when you don't know the God's voice and trying to find that passage I know it's in Samuel isn't it Lord um he talks about how you don't when you're waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning every day or something that's God speaking to you and God wants to know if we're gonna wake up he to what he's saying or we're gonna go back to sleep what's more important there's a passage I'm trying to look for that talks about exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and it's basically, um, I might have to pause y'all, give me one second. 
Okay, sorry, I had to I had to look for this because I don't want I want to give y'all scripture. So let me read Samuel. It's First Samuel three, and the subtitle says the Lord speaks to Samuel. And I'm gonna I'm saying this to say I'm gonna read this to say there are times the Lord is speaking to you, but because you don't know His voice, you don't know. He's speaking. You have to recognize his voice. You have to have a personal relationship to know that he's speaking to you. I know that like on my TikTok sometimes I remember there was this guy that was like, oh, I'm so tired of God. Like I'm calling out to him and I'm asking for a dream and I'm asking for this. And like he still hasn't showed up. And I'm like, first of all, he's not going to come in a way that you expect. And he's not just like, you know, you just snap your finger and be okay, God, speak. You know, God doesn't work like that. But he probably has heard the voice of God, but he doesn't recognize it because it doesn't have that personal relationship with him. I hope that made sense. But I'm going to read. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by, by assisting Eli. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again and if someone calls, <clears throat> and if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. That was First Samuel 3, 1 through 10. It is so imperative to know the voice of God. Because there's there's different voices that we can hear. We can hear the Lord's voice. We can hear Satan's voice. We can hear the flesh's voice. We can hear the Holy Spirit's voice. There's so many voices. And in order to not be deceived, we must have an intimate relationship with the Lord. So we can know his voice in his word it says my sheep followed me and they know my voice sometimes the lord would tell me something like i'll hear something and i'm like lord is that you or is that me like because sometimes i just don't know if i'm being honest like i would ask for comfort is that you or is that me and he always gave brings me back to my sheep follow me and they know my voice Oh, I gotta go. I didn't realize it was 10 o'clock already. I had to get this out. I gotta check out soon. But I pray this blesses to y'all guys. And don't take this lightly. Like, repent. Come back home. That's the Lord. The Lord created you. So why not have an intimate... Why not have an intimate relationship with someone 
who just spoke a word. Someone who created you, who gave you life. He gave you life. You're breathing because of him. You have whatever it is that you have, it's because of him. Most importantly, you have life because of him. You are up and breathing because of him. So, again, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he is the Son of God and he rose from the dead three days later, you will be saved. And then the Holy Spirit will come to live in you. And he is going to teach you every single day. He's going to teach you the truth. Lead you to all truth. And that's the word of God. So, I love you guys. God loves us so much more. And God was like putting the pieces together this morning. And I had to be obedient.